Welcome to Simplify Your Retirement with Certified Financial Planner Stephen Strickland from Wise Wealth LLC. In this podcast, we help individuals and couples plan for a peaceful and enjoyable retirement. Join us on this journey where we explore the importance of simplifying the retirement planning process as Stephen, with his years of experience and expertise in retirement income planning, along with guest experts, will help you achieve first wisdom, then wealth. And don't forget to check out the Simplify Your Retirement online course and other great resources at SimplifyYourRetirement.com. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Simplify Your Retirement with Stephen Strickland from Wise Wealth. Stephen, how are you? I'm doing great, Eric. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. I'm, I'm really excited. You've got a guest on the show today. Absolutely. This uh, season two here has been about building on what we talked about in season number one mm-hmm. about Simplify Your Retirement. It's been great to have some guests on and uh, really excited to have uh, as our guest today someone that some of my clients are familiar with. He's come out here and spoken to uh, my clients a couple years ago here in Kansas City, Tom Hegna. And so uh, we're looking forward to have Tom on the show today. All right, Tom, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know Stephen's going to be getting into your book, and so I'm just going to sit back and learn. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. For those of you who don't know, Tom Hegna is a renowned international economist, author, and speaker. He has written three books, including the best-selling Paychecks and Playchecks, Retirement Solutions for Life. He has worked in the retirement planning industry for over 30 years, He was at New York Life for a long time. Tom's passion and success for retirement planning and public speaking have led him to be recognized as one of the top speakers in the world by National Speakers Association. Tom is also a veteran. He served over 22 years in the U.S. Army and U.S. Army Reserve, retiring in 2006 as a lieutenant colonel with numerous awards and decorations. And uh, we're so glad, uh, Tom, that you have joined us today on the Simplify Your Retirement podcast. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right. You wrote a book just a couple years ago. Your most recent book is Don't Worry, Retire Happy, a great book, uh, Seven Steps to Retirement Security. And uh, I know a few years ago, you came out here to Kansas City. We rented a a movie theater, and (laughs) you spoke to us, you spoke to our clients, and and it was a great event. We got a lot of great feedback from that, uh, that event, and that's why I wanted to have you on the show today, just to remind everybody of these principles, you know, these seven steps. I feel like they are timeless. Uh, you know, there's some things that change. Products change, uh, you know, economies change, but it seems like the the principles and in, in, in the seven steps don't really ever change. Yeah. And, you know, they're based in math and science. So like, I don't, I, I don't sell any financial products that I don't like have a horse in the game of whether people buy a product or not. But I, what I, what I did is I did the research, um, mm-hmm. PhDs, uh, top PhDs around the world have studied retirement you know, for decades and, and they write these white papers and the average person doesn't read a white paper, but I did. I read all these white papers and I learned a fascinating amount of information about how to retire the optimal way. And that's really what I write about. That's what I speak about. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I, that that's one thing I wanted to ask you about. You, you mentioned a lot of times you having an optimal retirement and what do you mean by an optimal retirement? Well, see, I I would say the best retirement, but see, nobody knows what's going to be the best. You know, if the Dow Jones goes to 100,000, we should all put our money in the Dow Jones. If Bitcoin goes to a million bucks, we should all put our money in Bitcoin. If oil goes to $300 a barrel, we should all put our money in oil. Nobody knows what's going to be the best. And so what math and science does, whenever there's multiple variables, it looks for the optimal solution. And the optimal in plain English is this will be the best more often than anything else will be the best, and it'll never be the worst. That's optimal. So it's your best shot at having the best retirement. That's what optimal means. Okay, and that's what we're going for. The best shot to have the best retirement. It won't be the worst, but you're trying to look at the research. Uh, like you said, look at the math, look at the science, uh, do, and, and come up with the best possible solution out of you know several possible solutions. Uh, there's probably more than one way to plan for retirement. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of ways to plan for retirement, but most of them are suboptimal. They're not going to be the best, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and too many do-it-yourself investors have blind spots. 
You know, mm-hmm. what happens if taxes double, as I think they probably will? What will happen to your right. retirement? You know, what happens if we have rampant inflation or what happens if, if we continue on a deflationary path? Mm-hmm. What happens to your retirement then? Uh, you know, what happens yep. um, if the market crashes 50% and stays down for, for 15 or 20 years? What would that do to your retirement? And so people have, what if you need long-term care? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, what if you die early? Is your spouse going to be okay? And so, so the average do-it-yourself investor has all kinds of blind spots. They just say, oh, mm-hmm. I got a portfolio. My portfolio is doing so good. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's doing good while it does good. And then when it goes bad, <laughs> then, you're, then, then you're in big trouble. And so you've yeah. got to not just plan for the good. You've got to plan what happens if bad things happen. Yeah, I think that's great. Uh, I think you're right. A lot of people just have a, you know, they do an asset allocation. They answer a risk profile questionnaire. And they assume based on an asset allocation model, you're going to average a certain rate of return and it's always going to go up and it's going to go up, you know, steadily each and every year consistently. And we just know that's not the way that life works. And so that's not an optimal way to plan for retirement. That's for sure. I like the fact that you talk about in the book, you know, don't worry, retire happy. Uh, Now, this is something that, you know, the concept of happiness is one that you really address and that you really go for, you know, and one of the reasons why people should plan for retirement so they can be happy. I wonder, you know, in America today, I mean, what you see and what you hear out there, are are people retiring happy? I guess that's one question I have for you. Another question is, you know, what is, what is, how important is happiness in retirement? Well, there's been a lot of study on it. And not only is happiness important, but when you're happy, you tend to live longer. And so I really <laughs> dug in on what makes people happy in retirement. And it's not having $4 million in their portfolio. That makes people miserable because then the market <laughs> crashes, they're miserable, oil crashes, Bitcoin crashes. They, they, they go from disappointment to disappointment to disappointment. And, and, and so what, what, what the research has found is that people who have guaranteed income are the happiest. So think about the people you know who are retired, teachers, um, you know, firefighters, policemen, uh, government workers, people with pensions tend to be happier in retirement than people who don't have pensions. And so Mm. the research has really shown that guaranteed income in retirement is a key part of being happy. And now the research shows people tend to live longer when they, when they have Mm. guaranteed income and they're happier. So it's not the market going up 12% or 18% or 32%. Yeah, that's this year. What happens, you know, people have no idea that the Japanese stock market has been down for over 30 years. The European stock stock market has been down for over 20 years. Think about all the people over there who said, oh, mm-hmm. I got a portfolio, got my broker. And remember in the 80s, the Japanese stock market was doing what we're doing. I mean, they were hitting high, 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 hitting mm-hmm. new highs all the time. Well, it's been 30 years since that market crashed. It hasn't come back. You know, what would Amazing. happen to people's retirement here if that happened? Absolutely. That would be devastating, especially like you said, if they're planning on living on the income from those you know retirement savings in the stock market for that period of time. That would be uh, devastating. Devastating. I think it would not lead to happiness. And, and you mentioned in your book there is there there's like a new field of study. People are there's happiness research that is going on, and people are studying what makes people happy. And I found it extremely interesting in your book that you talked about, and you just mentioned it that people in retirement are happy when they know they have a guaranteed lifetime income. They know they don't have to worry about it regardless of what happens in the stock market. They can go on vacation. Uh, They can leave and not worry about it. But then also this actual real connection, this was shocking to me, the real connection between guaranteed lifetime income and not just happiness, but living longer. That's amazing to me. Well, there's been a lot of research and, and, uh, uh, you know, Freakonomics had a podcast uh, where they talked about it and it was really a University of Chicago study. And it studied people who bought these lifetime income annuities versus people who didn't. And what they found is that the people who bought the lifetime income annuities lived longer. They tended to have less stress. They worried less. And then um, there was an attorney, Patrick Tricker, who wrote an article two years ago in the Journal for Financial Service Professionals. And he found that a 65-year-old male who purchases a life annuity can expect to live about 20% longer than a 65-year-old male who does not. And and Amazing. when you're being paid to live, guess what? Many people. <laughs> People choose to live differently. They watch what they eat. They exercise. They call the doctor when they're not feeling well. They don't have the stress. They don't have the worry. And it's all those dumb little things that tend to cause people to live longer. So, you know, it's I, I believe it's in every one of your listeners' best interest to at least have a foundation 
a foundation of some guaranteed lifetime income. You're not going to put all of your money there, but right. a foundation that would cover all of your basic living expenses in retirement. You know, your housing, your food, your clothing, your cell phone, your internet. Uh -huh. um, and so that, that's just what the research shows. Again, I don't sell any of these products. I don't care if right. people buy them or not, but the <laughs> research shows that you should. Absolutely. And that's what I love about that. Uh, you mentioned, you know, covering your basic needs. And I know we're going to get into that. That's one of the seven steps. And, you know, we look at it from a standpoint of there's living expenses and there's lifestyle expenses. Uh, we, we really recommend and encourage everyone to at least guarantee their living expenses in retirement. You shouldn't have to worry about whether or not, you know, the electric bill is going to be paid, food's going to be on the table, insurance uh, premiums are going to be paid. Some people want to guarantee their lifestyle expenses too, and that's fine. But at, uh, at a bare minimum, we want people to cover their living expenses in retirement, which is a whole other matter, making sure that uh, you understand what those expenses are. But I love this connection uh, between, you know, being paid to live. Uh, you know, people want to live longer because they know if they die, they're going to miss out on the next monthly paycheck that's coming in. And yeah, so and, it's amazing. The I, I don't know if you've guy. ever had your parents or grandparents or old, when you're around somebody in there in their 80s or 90s, their world becomes very small. You know, they'd be in an assisted living facility or they're at home and, and, and it's the little things that matter a lot to them. So when they're getting this check every month, they, they look forward to it. They live a mm -hmm. little bit longer. They want to get, I can live for one more paycheck. Oh, I can get one more. Oh, I think I'm going to stick it to them one more time. And, and they just tend to live longer. And yeah. Many of them are have out there having fun because, see, what people don't understand about retirement is it's the spending of money in retirement that allows you to enjoy your retirement. It's the mm -hmm. travel. It's the dinners out. It's the bottles of wine with your friends. That's how mm -hmm. you would enjoy your retirement. See, I don't right. care how many millions of dollars somebody's got stashed <laughs> in their 401k or their brokerage account. Most people don't ever touch it. They're living this just yep. in case. So I can't do it just in case. Interest rates are low. Oh, the market might crash. And they never enjoy their retirement. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, don't try to be the richest guy in the cemetery. You know, I don't want to be the richest guy in the cemetery. I want to right. spend my money in retirement. But we right. can get into the psychonomics. I've written some other stuff about psychonomics. Yeah. And, and people have been psychonomically programmed to fail in retirement. I agree. And uh, that's so good. I, I know you've talked about before where people just, you know, they hoard it. They save it. You know, they're saving one of these days their whole life. They're going to keep it so that they can, you know, buy the boat, go to the golf club and all these things. And then all of a sudden, I guess they give it to their kids and then <laughs> their kids buy the boat and join the golf club and do all the things they wanted to do when they retired. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, you're not getting any younger. You don't get to take any of it with you. And, yes. and when we talk about life insurance, I'll teach people how to get the most for the least in retirement because mm -hmm. that's, you see, there's no dress rehearsal. We don't get to do it again. And mm -hmm. so if you learn some very simple steps, you can get the most for the least out of retirement. And it's not mm -hmm. about having it all in the market. It's not about all these other things. There are certain steps you need to take that will allow you to be happier and much mm -hmm. more successful in retirement and probably live longer. Absolutely. Well, uh, Tom, that leads us right into your seven steps. Where we've talked about uh, happiness right now. We've talked about having an optimal retirement. And uh, you gave us seven steps in this book about how to, how to make sure you plan for a happy retirement, hopefully a longer retirement. And uh, the first step is making sure that uh, you have a plan. And so, yeah, uh, I, you know, I, yeah. I always tell people, how can you get anywhere if you don't have a roadmap or some GPS to sh tell you where to go? And so, you know, step number one of anything is you've got to have a plan. And then I say in there, you need to work with a financial professional. Mm -hmm. Retirement is not a do-it-yourself project. I've written five books now, three in America, two in Canada, on retirement. I've spoken all over the world on retirement. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I use a financial professional, too. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because I can't do it by myself. I know what I need, but there's a thousand products out there. And mm -hmm. and I don't know which one of those thousand is best. And they change, as you know, every two weeks. They, they Something changes, something goes up, something goes down. And I need somebody that can scan that marketplace. And now there's software that can help this advisor do yep. that. But they can scan the marketplace and narrow those thousands of products down to two or three that will fit mm -hmm. exactly what I'm looking for at that time. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, uh, they just don't have time. Uh, they don't have time to put together a retirement income plan. What do you say to them? Well, you're not going to have a very fun retirement. I mean, look, <laughs> what's more important than planning 
30 or 40 years of your life. You know, people spend more time planning their summer vacation than they do doing some of these things that they need to do. So so it doesn't take long to plan. If you're working with a good financial professional, I believe they'll make it very simple for you. They have software. They can print you out graphs, charts. They can make projections based on what you think is going to happen, and they can worst case it. And that's the best thing. Yeah. A good financial professional will put your plan under a stress test. Mm-hmm. I, I just did a video, and I said, look, if you're a do-it-yourself investor and you think you're so smart, then bring your smart plan into a financial professional let them put it on a stress test. How will your plan function if taxes double? How will your plan mm-hmm. function if the market crashes 50% and stays down for 15 years? How will it mm-hmm. How will it uh, function if uh, inflation goes to 4 or 5%? Yeah. Now, I don't see inflation, but but it, it could. What would happen to your plan if you needed long-term care? What would happen mm-hmm. if you became disabled before you were able to uh, finish your plan? What would happen yeah. to your family if you died too soon? So that's what a financial professional does is they're going to put it under a yeah. stress test. We all know we can succeed if the market goes up 30% every year. Oh, yeah, life would be fun. It'd be easy. It's mm-hmm. not that way. And, right. and, and you know, there's too much funny money being pumped into this market that you're yes. raising an entire generation of kids now who think that the market goes up 20 or 30% every year. Well, it right. does when you're pumping trillions of dollars in there, but we can't do that indefinitely. And when that happens, and it's going to happen right when a bunch of baby boomers are entering retirement and that mm-hmm. market crashes, then what are people going to do? Absolutely. Well, uh, for uh, for those of you who are just joining us on the Simplify Retirement Podcast, we're, we're being joined by Tom Hegna. Uh, renowned speaker and author and researcher on uh, uh, money and finance and retirement planning. And uh, for those of you who have, who have stumbled across our podcast, maybe for the first time today, I do want to let you know that uh, we have uh, several podcasts that we've already recorded in the past where we go into detail about how we do planning. And what Tom is saying is extremely important. You, we don't start with uh, the products. We don't start with the investments. You start with the plan. That's the foundation of any, you know, peaceful and enjoyable retirement is making sure that you have a foundation, making sure you have a plan. And that plan, a retirement plan is not just simply answering the questions on a risk profile questionnaire. Uh, A retirement income plan focuses on what Tom just mentioned, and that is making sure you understand all the risk associated with retirement income in retirement. There's a different set of risks that goes into when you're retired than before you retired. So it's very important that your plan addresses all of the concerns, risk challenges that retirees face. That's one. The second thing is when you're looking at retirement planning, uh, we're looking at, you know, what does retirement look like to you and how much is that going to cost? It really comes down to figuring out your income need in retirement and making sure that we can uh, figure out a way to guarantee that uh, if possible and, and make sure you have a peaceful and enjoyable retirement. So those are the elements of a plan. So, Tom, you talked about that. That's number one. If someone wants to have a happy retirement, they can't just wing it. Like, like you said, they can't just say, I'm going to go with the flow. Asset allocation, diversification has always worked. It got me to this point. So I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to tinker with the asset allocation and we're just going to keep going forward. We know that there's more to it than that. And like you said, it's important to talk with a financial planner. The second step you talk about is after you have a plan, making sure that you maximize social security. And, uh, you know, what would you say to people about social security, the state of social security right now? And what's the best way to maximize their benefits? Well, I mean, social security is still the main game in retirement. I mean, uh, let me just give you some facts. Um, among elderly Social Security beneficiaries, 50% of married couples, 70% of unmarried uh, people receive 50% or more of their income from Social Security. And 21% of marrieds and 45% of singles, it, it, it counts for more than 90% of their income in retirement. And that's crazy because Social Security was never set up to be the major source of income. It's there to, 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 to be a supplement, to give you a little bit extra. It was never meant to be enough to, to give you a full retirement. And and I think too many people don't realize that Social Security is, is for many people, their largest retirement asset. For a single person, it can pay them over a half a million dollars. For a married couple, it can pay well over a million dollars. And yet people spend more time planning that summer vacation than learning how to maximize those valuable benefits. Yeah. I, I always think that's interesting that people don't realize you, know, you always mention it's one of the largest retirement assets that most Americans have. We're going to talk about another one, uh, you know, later on, maybe even our, our next podcast, but uh, social security is one of the biggest ones. When you look at the total amount of of really the amount of the asset you would have to have to produce that income is one way I look at it, but you're looking at it as the amount of money you might receive from Social Security over your lifetime. 
It's huge. Yeah, and and picking picking the wrong. I say picking your so, social security start date is the number one most important retirement decision you're going to make. And most people make the wrong one. You know, they listen to their buddies at the coffee shop and and they tell them, "Oh, take it out at 62." Well, that's not the way to maximize your social security benefit. Now, I can give you some specific reasons why some specific people should take it early. I mean, if both the husband and wife, if their health is terrible, or if there's minor children in the house, or there are some reasons why people might take it early but in general the breadwinner should delay so if you have a husband a wife and let's say the husband made more money in his career than the wife the wife can take her benefit early so the lower earning spouse whoever that is they can claim early i don't have a problem with that but the higher earning spouse should delay till 66 or 70 if they can why because that check covers both lives See, when he dies, which check does she get? She gets his. If he took his early, he locked her into a lower survivor benefit. Because that breadwinner's check covers both lives, you know, in general, the breadwinner should delay. There you go. That's great advice. The breadwinner, the higher income uh, earner, if there's a married couple, should delay as long as possible, at least the full retirement age is what Tom is saying. And if not, uh, it, ideally, even if you're going to wait till 70, uh, because the survivor, one person passes away, the surviving spouse gets the higher of the two Social Security. So just in general, especially if someone's working, uh, you would just say, you know, ideally, if at all possible, just keep delaying benefits as long as you can. Well, here's the deal. People say, well, what if I die? What if I die? What if I die? And then they keep all my money. I'm going to start it, you know. Here's the deal. The life expectancy today for a 65-year-old couple is age 93. So that means one of the mm. husband or wife is going to, uh, 50% of the couples out there will live to be 93. 25% mm. of those couples will have somebody live to be 97. See, everybody thinks, oh, I'm going to die when I'm, you know, 74, 82. No, <laughs> the, 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 the numbers show something very different, that one of you will live to be 93 and, and, you know, perhaps mm -hmm. to be 97. And so I, if when you plug that type of longevity into a social security calculator, you will see that it can impact your retirement by hundreds of thousands of dollars over both your lifetimes. Now, if people say, I want to take it early because I think they're, they're you know, of whatever they, the reason is, I'm okay taking it early as long as they invest it. And if they would put that mm -hmm. into like a, a deferred income annuity to start at age 70 or something, they can actually have mm -hmm. more in some cases than waiting to age 70. So if right. it's invested properly, conservatively, safely, um, mm -hmm. then I could then I could possibly support it. But I, I otherwise, you yeah. know, they're just really they're they're wasting money that they could be getting. Um, by taking it Absolutely. too early. And that really goes back into, you know, the importance of having a plan. Uh, that's why we start with that first. And then looking at Social Security, we always tell people don't make any investment decisions outside the context of a plan, even the Social Security timing decision. Uh, we see a lot of people, they'll just get a report, Social Security, you know, timing report, and they'll make their decision based on some report that is, you know, separate outside of a plan. Well, there's a lot of factors that go into a plan, depending on how much assets you already have saved. Are you going to be spending down your own assets to delay Social Security? There's a lot of things that go into that. And so we say don't make any decisions outside the context of a plan, including the Social Security timing decision. It should be done within that context. And uh, yeah, I like what you say, and that is that most people don't really think about, you know, when they get ready to retire, let's say they retire at 65, they're going to, one one of the two, if, if they're married, is probably going to live 25 to 30 years in retirement. That, and that's a lot of monthly checks that need to come in for a long time. Yeah, and to the people who think that Social Security isn't going to be there, let me be clear, Social Security is going to be there. They're not going to eliminate Social Security for all these millions of Americans. That's not going to happen. And Social Security is really not the problem. I could fix Social Security in less than 15 minutes for the next 100 years. <laughs> Social Security is an easy fix. They're going to have to raise the retirement age on younger people. They're going to have to raise some mm -hmm. amount of taxes. But Social Security is an easy fix. It's Medicare and Medicaid that mm -hmm. is, I can't fix it. And I don't think the government can fix it either. Yeah. I'm waiting for Amazon or Walmart or Apple. Yeah. I think, I think, I think right. one of those companies will figure out Medicare and Medicaid before the government does. But that is the big problem. That is the, that is the big so black you, hole that's out there. 
So you're not worried about 2034. We've been reading these reports, no. for, or reports forever. 2034, that's when there's going to be more people being you know, paid Social Security benefits than the government's receiving. They could fix it. I could, <laughs> if, if, if I had the edict to fix it, I would fix it in less than 15 minutes for the next 100 years. And right. it wouldn't even be that painful. Yeah, you'd have a couple more bucks yes. coming out of your paycheck every week. But it wouldn't be, it wouldn't, I'm not like saying, you know, you don't have to triple it or yeah. anything. You just have to raise it a little bit, right. percent here. You got to raise the retirement age. My dad got it at 65. I don't get it till I'm 67. Is my 19 right. year old daughter shouldn't get it till she's 70. Her kids shouldn't get it till they're 74. Yes. People are living longer. We got to yeah. realize that. Right. And that was the whole point of Social Security from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, they never expected to pay people 30 years uh, in retirement. That's right. So, uh, step number three, we say first have a plan. Second, you maximize your Social Security benefits. Number three, uh, maybe consider a hybrid retirement. What do you mean by that? Well, don't just go cold turkey into retirement. Do do a hybrid. It, you know, find something that you like to do and work for a couple of extra years, even part time. But but if you can bring in some extra money, uh, it's going to increase your retirement significantly because it, you, you'll have increased earnings, increased savings. You can increase your Social Security benefits, and it keeps you from tapping into your portfolio for a couple of years. You know, there was an article published about two years ago in Think Advisor, uh, and it said, uh, retirement savings mind blower. And, and here's what it says. There's no saving you could possibly do that would affect your retirement resources as dramatically. You can change your savings rate from 6% to 26%, and it's still one of as much power as working a few extra years. And if you mm. save 1% more for your final 10 years of work, that would be the equivalent to working about one month longer. See, there's very little a person can do to help their retirement more than to work for a couple of extra years. That is a huge statement. Uh, there's so many ramifications to working one year longer, two years longer. It's one or two years of not drawing down your assets. It's one or two years of delaying Social Security. I cannot imagine the impact that has, like you just mentioned, a massive impact on the, on the other end. Um, and even like you said, you may be at a place in your life where you feel like you just you need to stop, you need to do something different. And so maybe it's a, it's a part-time uh, you know, retirement. It's not full cold turkey. I'm done working. I'm now I'm going to start living on my assets and social security. Maybe you do something like you mentioned in the book, you know, a, a hobby, something that you enjoy and, and getting some part-time income. And I'm sure that's related to happiness yeah, in some way too. It is. And I, 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 I did a trial retirement last summer cause I didn't know, like my whole family doesn't believe I can retire cause I've been going for 30 years at 200 days a year on the road. Right. And I said, well, I'm going to take a trial retirement. So I, for three months, I blocked off my calendar, didn't travel. I, and I, and I joined a country club up in Flagstaff, Arizona, <laughs> played golf, loved mm -hmm. it. And so I did it again this, this last summer and I'm, I, and now I'm kind of easing into retirement. And so I'm still doing things like this, but I'm not going to be spending 200 days a year on the road anymore. I'm not, this is my new normal. Mm -hmm. If it's not virtual, I'm not doing Doing right. it. And, and, uh, and I'm going right into retirement with everybody else. That's awesome. Uh, you're, you're living proof. <laughs> you're putting to practice what you're telling other people you've done. And I, and I do know because I've heard you speak and, uh, we, we've, we've met and talked together that what you're talking about in this book, uh, not only are you, 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 you don't sell these products, you just have done the research and you believe in them. Not only that, but you're actually, you followed these steps. It's not like, Hey, you know, I'm prescribing this for everybody else. It's what everyone else needs to do. You're actually doing it. And, uh, you're living proof and you can give us that, uh, you know, that perspective, which is really great. One last thing I want to talk about in today's podcast, and I appreciate the fact that you have joined us and we're going to have Tom with us for this podcast in the next one. So I know you won't want to miss that, but I want to get through step number four in this podcast today, and then we'll continue on in the next one. But the fourth thing you talked about just, you know, quickly, Tom is about inflation, making sure that you protect your savings account from inflation. What are your thoughts on inflation? And especially for retirees, why is it such a, a bigger deal than it is before you retire? Yeah. So I'm an economist. I put out my economic commentary every year and, and I, I really don't see inflation. And a lot of people are saying it because we print all this money and we, and we've spent all this money and it's going to be rampant inflation. I don't see it. Um, people can watch my YouTube video, just type mm -hmm. Tom Hegna economic commentary and I'll explain it why, you know, it's highly unlikely we're going to see significant inflation, but you still got to plan for it because even in a deflationary world, there's inflation. I mean, we've seen college prices go up. We've seen healthcare prices go up. We've seen uh, 
long-term care facility. And, and seniors have more inflation than others because they have to worry about health care and long-term care and all these other things. So yeah. you've got to have a plan to protect yourself against inflation, regardless of what I think or anybody else thinks about inflation. There will be pockets of inflation all the time. And so that's where stocks can fit. That's where mm-hmm. real estate can fit. I'm not against those right. products, but you can invest, you can put it together a portfolio that if we get inflation, the portfolio goes up and there's more money to take out more money. But you can also do what I've done. Mm-hmm. I bought guaranteed lifetime income that will kick in when I turn age 60, mm-hmm. but I bought even more that kicks in when I turn age 62. I bought even more that kicks in when I turn age 65. I bought even more that kicks in when I turn age 70. Mm-hmm. I am guaranteed to have increasing income for the rest of my life, yeah. and your listeners can do that as and well. And that's how you you handled inflation. You decided, I'm going to handle it that way. I'm just going to guarantee it and make sure every few years I get a pay increase. Right. Yeah, and I have other investments right. as well. I own a couple houses, and I have some money in the market. But but I've 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 have a foundation yep. that's guaranteed, and everybody should right. have a foundation I appreciate that. that's, that's guaranteed. great. And, that, and that's what we're going to begin with in step number five. We're being joined today on this podcast, and the next one with by Tom Hegna. You can find more information about Tom at tomhegna.com. You can also go to uh, retirehappynow.com, which is the name of this book. And, and those of you who are listening to the podcast today, if you want more information. Or if you would like to find out how you can receive a copy of Tom's book, Don't Worry, Retire Happy, you certainly can contact us um, at wisewealth.com. You can go to wisewealth.com, and there's a contact us page. You can call us, or you can send us an uh, an email through that website, and we can tell you how to get a copy of Tom's book. Tom, uh, thank you for joining us in this podcast. I look forward to continuing with you on, on the next one. We covered the first four steps and we'll cover the next three and we'll talk about life insurance in the next podcast. You won't want to miss it. Eric, uh, that is it, uh, I believe for today's show. Yeah, absolutely. This was, this is fantastic guys. It was a ton of great information. Really looking forward to that next podcast. So, uh, Tom, thank you so much for being on the show today. And Steven, of course, thank you bring, for bringing him on the show. And of course, our last thank you goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Simplify Your Retirement podcast with Steven Strickland. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Stephen comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it really easy to share these podcasts with your friends and family. And share this one because they're going to want to hear part two for sure. Again, thanks so much for listening today. For everyone at Wise Wealth, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Simplify Your Retirement podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Wise Wealth LLC or Simplify Your Retirement. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of a financial advisor or other qualified financial professionals with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.